Hello, everybody. This is Greg29407, back with another episode of City Skylines. We've got several things to go over today. Now, first, I want to show you how we finished up our Pirate's Cove Park, the amusement park we were working on. I also want to go over uh, a couple of things we've added. Notice up here we have our uh, ore uh, production. We finally did that, and also some stuff we did with fairies. And uh, so what happened was I filmed an episode yesterday uh, that covered all this information, and it ended up being over an hour long. And at the end of that, I looked down and said, you know, there's not an hour's worth of material here. Um, so what I, what I decided to do and says is do this summary video. They'll cover everything, hopefully in much less time. This is our overall city. We're looking really, really good. And uh, let's first of all look at our amusement park because it turned out really nice. So as you remember, we were doing our canals and our amusement park up here. And uh, we ended up getting levels four and five after the end of our last episode. We put our Ferris wheel down here and we have our, our big uh, roller coaster and then this uh, Tower of Terror thing and then this, this thing over here with the uh, revolves and swings and everything. It looks pretty good. We hit level five fairly quickly. Uh, the park looks good. It's, it's very spread out, of course, as we, had, as we had talked about. And again, you can do this very much more compacted. We could have probably fit everything in this one section if we wanted to. But we had the space and we decided to, to spread it out. It turned out really nice. Let's see here. What have we got? We have, we've had 29,000 visitors. Uh, the entertainment values was off the charts. 116 people per week. Very nice. Uh, I think that's more than what our zoo is doing. Let's see here. Our zoo is 14 people a week. So yeah, the amusement park is, is more successful. And uh, I think we're just losing less money on that one. <laughs> so uh, we have our traffic in really good shape. Let's see here, 85%. So that's really nice. But what I want to talk about was we finally, I started finally started doing the ore production. And uh, I've been thinking about this for a while. Remember, we had uh, this railroad track, and we had like a there's a building up here, an abandoned building. We had some tracks up here, some abandoned tracks, and uh, I didn't end up using those because if we look at our natural resources, the railroad tracks are right here on top of the best part of our resources, <laughs> which isn't a good place to put them. So what I did was, I took this little road, and I have a loop. Uh, what a surprise! Another circular pattern in our town. Um, so you come off the freeway, and this is all a one-way road, and it goes around here like this, and it comes back, and you can exit onto the back onto the freeway. You can kind of go around the loop. We have some two-way dirt roads in here, which is where we have our mining. And as I had been discussing before, uh, down here, I have a one-way road that goes this way. It connects to our train station, and then back up here. Uh, th this train uh, connects to tracks that are not connected to the rest of our town. These are tracks that are connected uh, to this section of the town and it goes up and off up there. So it's a totally different set of tracks than our other uh, tracks we have. Now, originally, I was gonna leave this as, as the main circle. And uh, what happened was though, uh, all of our assets here are much bigger than we have in our oil production. You know, in oil, of course, we're just drilling stuff out of the ground. So the, the, the assets are only like maybe this big. Here, this is our the large ore mine. It's, it's pretty huge. Uh, so I needed more space. So what I did was, um, oh, I sank the railroad tracks down into the ground. And I used, that, used the move it to, to do that so that I can get my roads over here a little bit easier. I only had to raise this by three meters. So I do like to tell the computer to do a little bridge. Yeah, with these gravel roads, I have uh, gravel bridges. <laughs> I did a one-way road up here and then one-way road back down. And then this is a two-way road. And this connects from here all the way down to my uh, railroad depot. And this is where I've done all my processing plants. I have storage over here. And with ore, we're creating metals and we're creating glass. And then the metals and glass go into everything. Glass goes into fiberglass and metals goes into steel. So I ended up putting four of these basic buildings or grinding mills. They produce 4,200 units of, of metal a week from ore. And then I put in a glass manufacturing plant, which I think was a level two building. Uh, it turns uh, 4,288 units per week into glass. I have uh, three of those. And then the next level, we had a rotary kiln plant that creates metals. And this is uh, the double the size of the other 
um, or uh, plants, uh, the first ones. And then we had glass manufacturing plant, which is the same. I just put some more of those down. But then we got this one, fiberglass plant, produces 8,500. So this is the twice as big uh, building. Had a couple of those. And then what I found was with the ore, right now we're producing 228 tons of ore. Uh, 69 tons goes to metal, 38 tons goes to glass. We make a lot more money on metals. Uh, in fact, the glass is not that profitable. So I put more towards the metals. Uh, so in other words, you're gonna do all the, the mining over here and the trucks are gonna take it up this way into the processing, the basic processing, and then the higher end processing and probably the unique factories. So here we have the industrial steel plant. They make steel products, we triple our money here. We have electronics factory. Uh, we need plastics, which we can get from our oil production over on the other side of the map. So we about double our money on electronics. And then I built this one. This is the uh, car factory. I have this shut off now because it's really expensive. Uh, it's like 3,400 a week. And we don't have any animal products because we don't have farms. Uh, I assumed that we would import uh, animal products, you know, from out of town, but that, apparently that's not the case. I think we had to produce this ourselves and import it from our other places. So I turned this off. Um, if we decided to build a farm, uh, then we would turn this back on and we could build cars. And I'm guessing that the margin is probably not that high on that on farms anyway. Um, this takes up a lot of space. Now, discount the fact that I have this big mountain range in here. Um, I wanted, I needed a place to put my processing. I said, oh, there's a nice little valley or a flat land over here. So I just kind of went around that. Uh, but even so, this is decent size. If you look at our map, you know, here's our, here's our oil. This entire thing right here. And then here is our ore. And if this was closer in, then the ore would be like this. So still maybe three times the size of our oil. Uh, oil, we're tearing $75,000 in profit per week. It ranges, of course. Uh, or about 17,000. We could probably boost that up a little bit. Uh, to compare, our forestry, it's 18,000. So forestry, I, I was under the impression that ore was on par with oil in terms of, of profits. It's not. It's more in line with the forestry and farming. So good profits, I mean, very good profits. The, these. These industries will really support everything else you do in a large city. They will keep you going in a large city. Um, but oil is the king. That's the, you want to go with oil every time. Uh, the big money is oil, and the big money is our trade school. I mean, look at that. $119,000 in tuition fees. Expenses are $24,000. So that and, and oil is what's funding everything else in our city. <laughs> so that's pretty good. So that is our ore. Um, is exactly the same process as we saw with forestry and with, with oil. Um, same type of assets and the same growth. Um, I try and do this so that we have a, its own train station so we don't have traffic with everything else. Uh, Rebalanced Industries is a fantastic mod for this. Otherwise, these roads would be completely backed up with trucks. Um, this makes a more reasonable number of trucks usage. So that's what, what saves these industries. Okay, next is uh, the ferry boats. Uh, we have built a city that, and I didn't realize this at the time. Uh, well, let me tell you what I did first. I had a feeling, <clears throat> excuse me, that we could build a ferry boat from our airport down here to our tourist area. And uh, so, in fact, here's where the, uh, the ferry boat was set for, to go. This is our harbor, and this works great. This has people coming in from other um, towns off our map. And so I built this. Now, in order to do ferry boats, let me, yeah, let's pull this up here. So we have uh, you know, the harbor, which we already have. Uh, we can do a cargo harbor and cargo hubs. But for ferry boats, uh, we have, you need to have a ferry depot. <clears throat> and the ferry depot is where ferries stay between work shifts. It's kind of like the tram building. Um, that's where all the trams come from and that kind of thing. So I put that right here. This is the building right here. And uh, so it's off here by, so next to, between the airport and our, 
or one of our recycling centers. It has a little road off that main road. And then we have a ferry stop. Uh, it fits in a, in a canal easily, connect ferry stops and piers. Um, and we have a ferry pier, which can contain two ferries at the same time. So I put a ferry stop here right at the airport. So I figured, you know, people would come in from the land of the airport and they could drive someplace or they could walk over here. And I put the ferry pier down here so we can handle more because I thought I may do more ferry lines. And just like our subway, you then put in the line. So you notice we have, the, we have this line here. It's just like with the subway and you stretch it out. You have to, one has to come up here. Now, one problem with the ferry line is you have to raise your bridges. Uh, the other problem, which I found, which is kind of irritating, is it cuts off your power sources. So let me show you what I, have, what I mean by that. Uh, I have power lines connecting one side of the river to the other, and the ferry boats will break that up. So I had to put two of these, um, these floating things, uh, advanced wind turbines in the, in the water, to connect to these two because you can't do it otherwise, which I think is kind of a, a glitch in the system. But anyway, so I, anyway, I connected this all the way down so the, the, the ferry boats would go back and forth. And then I set the boats up. I made a line just like we do with, with all of our other uh, transportation. And the ferry boats contain, uh, can, can uh, transport 50 people, 50. And I got absolutely nobody on my ferry boats. Not a single person ever traveled on my ferry boats. And the reason for that is Sims are going to take the fastest route possible. Um, it's much faster for one of these Sims to leave the airport, get on the road, and drive down the freeway to exactly where they need to go, rather than to get on this ferry boat and meander down the river. So because it's faster, they're going to take the roads every time. They're not going to, they're not going to take my ferry boats. The other problem that I had never noticed was we have a city on multiple rivers, and yet we're, we're kind of ignoring the rivers. Uh, because our, our city is built on circles, everything is, is facing inward. Um, everything on the river is facing inside. They're not facing the river. Notice we only have one road normal road bridge going over the river. This is the only road that, that's a regular road that goes over the river. We have that, and we have a tram-only bridge here. That's it. Every other road that crosses the river is a freeway. So we are completely ignoring our river. Um, if you look at these houses, this, all these neighborhoods that are right on the river, they back up to the river. The river is in their backyards. They're facing this way, inside or into our circle. Uh, on this side, I've got, you know, houses on both sides of this little inlet. They're all facing inward. They're all facing my shopping center. No one's looking at the river unless they're looking out the back window. Um, I didn't mean to do that. It's just kind of, kind of happened. Now, it'd be interesting to go back and do another city on this exact same map where everything is facing the river, where you have, you know, 20 different bridges crossing the river in various places. Two-lane roads, four-lane roads, six-lane roads, highways, freeways, all sorts of ways connecting rivers. Um, all the, the high-rises facing the river. In other words, having the road along the quay and then the, the, the high-rises on the other side of that road facing the river. Having a big riverfront parks here and there. Now, this would be a park. This would be a park, that kind of thing. Um, it'd be an interesting way because the city would be totally different. Um, same exact map. It would be completely, totally different. This, uh, this area right here, our tourists, is the only area that we're really facing the water. And again, we're facing the, the, the coastline. And this is what I mean by that. We have the road right on the water, and all the buildings are facing it. Um, if we built the entire city like that, you know, we could have always you know, had a road here that connected right over here. If this wasn't tourism, we could have done you know, the main road here. Um, I think we'd have a completely different city. I'm not saying it's better or worse. It'd be different. It'd be kind of interesting. So maybe we'll revisit this this uh, murky coast map at some point and and, and do that. Um, but that is it. That is uh, a summary of my one hour plus video <laughs> on ore production and uh, our unsuccessful attempt at ferry boats. 
Uh, the other thing too is, I think if we had started ferry boats early on and gotten people using them, they would have they would have used those more often too. But trying to to shoehorn ferry boats in at the very end, eh, not really successful. So that's it. Uh, we are close to the end of Murky Coast. I think we've done pretty much everything we want to do. Uh, we could do some farming up here, but again, to be honest, farming is exactly the same as our forestry and our oil and our ore and. There's not much point in, in, in doing all that. Um, the city's not finished. These cities never are. You, we can always do more stuff. We can fill all this stuff in, put more houses and things, and, and do some things up here. And we could just do a huge amount of stuff. We have 143,000 people here. At one point, we were at 157. So it kind of it, it kind of varies up and down. I see I have a lot of cemeteries that are full. I need to take care of that. But that's going to do it for this episode. Um, a nice little summary. So uh, until next time, this is Greg29407 saying aloha, and we will see you next time.